What's up, Unbroken Nation? Hello, my friends. I'm Michael Unbroken, host of the Think Unbroken podcast and founder of thinkunbroken.com. And I'm honored to be your trauma coach and mentor because I believe that everyone is capable of getting unstuck, cultivating self-love, and becoming the hero of their own story. I believe that when implemented correctly, the practical tools and education you will receive from this show will help you lead an unbroken and extraordinary life. I believe that no matter what we come from, that we all have the ability to choose ourselves first, to create and manifest a powerful and grace-filled future, and love the reflection in the mirror. I believe that every day is a day to grow, learn, heal, and change. That's why I started my company, thinkunbroken.com, which is an online training and healing and personal growth platform where you get everything that I know about how to get motivated, be accountable, get out of the vortex, and become the hero of your own story through community, connection, and commitment. For more information, visit thinkunbroken.com. Please listen closely as you may learn just one thing that will help you be unbroken. And please share this episode with at least three of your friends because we all need community and connection in our healing journey. And be sure to DM me and tag me on Instagram at Michael Unbroken so that I can say hi. I just wanna thank you again for being a part of this, for listening and being a member of the Unbroken Nation. Now, let's get into today's show and make the world unbroken. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you are doing well wherever you are in the world. Um, Had a really interesting weekend. Uh, Last week, actually the last two weeks have probably been the two busiest weeks of my life. And not a bad thing, not complaining. I'm always thinking about momentum. And sometimes when you're caught up in momentum, you're like, pause and like, oh my goodness, I'm going a hundred million miles an hour. That's not always beneficial because sometimes you need to take a break. Sometimes you need to relax. Sometimes you need to do nothing all day. And that is what I did on Sunday this week. And in that, one of the things I did is I went and saw the new documentary film about Anthony Bourdain called Roadrunner. And it was so incredible that I sat down and I decided to write a piece on it. Not a review, not a, not a, this is what to expect or anything of that nature, but just kind of my thoughts, my, my takeaways, my initial reaction to it. What's really interesting about the journey that I've had and where I'm at right now with Think Unbroken and life and all the things is it's all predicated on me being a writer first. And I love to write. I write frequently. It's on the blog. I write frequently that, you know, get posted on social media. I really love to write and it's part of really who I am. And I always think of myself as a writer first, which is probably odd to a lot of people when they hear that because they look at me, they go, well, I'm a speaker and I'm a coach and an entrepreneur and all those things. But in my heart, I'm, I'm a writer first. And I think I've always been a writer first. And I took from that film just, I don't want to call it inspiration because I'm, I'm frequently inspired, but this understanding of just knowing what it's like to be faced with the, the darkness of uh, suicide, suicidal ideations of this idea of taking your life. And I sat this morning and I, I wrote this piece. I got up super early because I was like, you know, I want to sit down and write for a couple of hours, really flesh out this idea of where I'm at before, even before I'm going to the gym, before starting my my coaching day, before all the things. And so that's what I did. And I'm going to step into this episode a little bit differently than I generally do um, because I'm actually going to read what I wrote. And the reason why is because it is constructed in a way that helps me convey my thoughts about not necessarily even just simply Anthony Bourdain's life, but about suicide. And excuse me, I have some water. If you're watching this, I apologize. So I'm going to read this to you. And um, if you're watching, this will probably be a boring episode to watch because I'm going to look at this piece of paper in my hand. Well, multiple pieces of paper in my hand. But if you're listening, um, I want you to think about this for a moment. No matter whether you're at, no matter where you are at in your journey, no matter how sad or depressed or anxious or lonely that you feel, there is always support. There's always 
a way that you can reach out. And I know that's not always the easiest thing to hear. And I wish that I would have had this understanding when I was 25 or when I was 14 and, and I attempted to take my own life because I just felt like there was so much darkness. I didn't know, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know how to navigate the feelings of shame and guilt and hurt and the ramifications of impact of trauma. And, and we know now looking at the research that people who come from traumatic childhoods are much, much, much more likely to end their own life. And I think people misconstrue it and say, well, it's selfish or it's this or it's that. And I always look at it as like, until you're in a place that is that dark, it's really hard to wrap your head around why it's justifiable for some people. And look, I'm not saying that it's okay. I don't know that it is or it isn't. What I do know is that when you are in this place that it is so for lack of a better term, lonely and unkind. And the words in your head are just this constant reinforcement of what you're not capable of doing and not believing yourself and saying, well, why, why should I bother? Then it's really simple to get caught up in that. And when you get caught up in that, it can overtake you. And that was my experience. And so sitting watching that last night, it would just, I heard people in the crowd being like, you know, that's, that's really selfish. And I don't understand why he would do that. And I thought to myself, well, of course you don't understand because you're not him. And that idea of walking a mile in people's shoes always makes me think about the truth that we don't understand what's going on in other people's minds or heads. And even ourselves often we're conflicted with understanding who we are. And as I sat and I heard those things, I just thought to myself, well, it's easy to say that until you faced it, until you've been looking down the lack of a better turn the barrel of a gun and going, well, what the hell is it that I'm supposed to do next? And so um, I'm going to dive into this. I'm going to read this. I know it's going to be a little bit off kilter from the norm where I'm just kind of like freestyling and having a conversation, but I think that this is an important thing to talk about. And because of that, I'm, I'm going to share that with you today. So uh, without further ado, and, and if you could uh, bear with me, because I even like when I read the audio books, um, there was a lot of stop and start there. So I'm going to try to do this in a succinct way. I watched Roadrunner yesterday, the new documentary about Anthony Bourdain's life, rather death. And it reminded me that some people in the audience just don't get suicide. I mean, what's so hard to get? Wow, he is so selfish. And I would never do that murmured between the sounds of crunching popcorn and sips of beer from the lips of people who maybe just don't get it and never will. And that's not a bad thing. I wish I could say that I walked away with a new love and appreciation for Bourdain, but I didn't. And that is because I do get it. And in all fairness, he's always one of the three people I would want to have dinner with, Jay-Z and Freddie Mercury being the others. I understand why he chose to take his own life. And it's that simple. However, in doing so, he leaves behind a world of darkness and melancholy anywhere that the lore of the iconic traveler might have touched. My understanding of his choice, selfish or not, comes from being in that darkness myself. People will say suicide is selfish, and I can get that, but most people don't understand that sometimes it's the only thing that feels like it will set you free from the torment in your head. It's easy to be dismissive of what we don't understand and call to attention that maybe it was us. Excuse me. See, this was come out. It's easy to be dismissive of what we don't understand and call attention that maybe if it was us, that we would do it differently or that we wouldn't do it at all, whatever it was. I used to think that the idea of suicide was for cowards until I understood the truth. And the truth is that sometimes the darkness overwhelms you. Sometimes you can... Sometimes you succumb to its cold, dark grasp, and as it pulls you under, you can't help but think, well, here we go again. Suicide impacts so many lives, and it's heartbreaking. Let's not get that twisted. There is almost nothing more painful than knowing that someone lost the fight with themselves. Suicide happens more than we care to admit or can handle. From getting out of bed to simply wearing clean clothes and bathing, the struggle to exist in a world where our mental health is simply meant to be curbed by endless pharmaceutical commercials and 20 minutes on the Peloton is unfair. More so, 
perhaps what is unjust is that as we seek change, we know that we will lose more people before we lose less. What's that age old adage? Oh yes. Where does one even begin to have an open conversation about suicidal ideations, pain, suffering, loss, guilt, hopelessness, or insert noun here? Great question. Despite years of my own struggles, I feel like I have some semblance of hope and that instead of adamantly fighting my inner thoughts, I've cuddled up next to them under a nice warm blanket with a notebook. My favorite Mont Blanc knockoff that I got at a seedy black alley in a mall in Vietnam and a cup of coffee. A Mont Blanc is a pen. I know someone's going to ask that. Sometimes I imagine that I'm sitting here in the same way that Anthony did chain smoking a pack of Marlboro Reds and writing the next great American prose. Hey, what's up Unbroken Nation? Michael here. I just wanted to take a moment and invite you to the Think Unbroken Community Coaching Sessions. We start these sessions at the beginning of every month and we take a deep dive into the baseline and frameworks of what it means to get out of the vortex and become the hero of your own story through community, connection, commitment, and education. You can learn more about this at HealTraumaCoach.com, where you can fill out an application and sign up for a trauma healing call with me or my team to see if the Think Unbroken community coaching sessions is right for you. That's at HealTraumaCoach.com. We start at the beginning of every month. I cannot wait to see you there. And I'll be honest with you, if I'm not the right fit for you, we will help you find the person that can help you on your journey. These ideations of mine are obviously from an addictive personality and an imagination that has run amok, allowing me to step into potential as I could have anything I never imagined. And so with that, I embrace it and I say, let's see what I can do regardless of the pain and sometimes in spite of it. Let me insert my Surgeon General's warning here. I am not a doctor. Hell, in high school, they literally handed me my diploma and said, get the hell out of here. So on that note, I wouldn't even listen to me. So why cuddle up with thoughts and pains of suicide instead of trying to stuff it down and run? And what do I mean by that? Am I saying that I'm pro-suicide? Am I going to attempt to off myself again? Is there any chance I may stumble my way back into the depths of the darkness? The answers to these questions and many other, I will answer right now. I tried to think of a witty Bourdain segue, you know, the kind he would rattle off without hesitation that would make you stop and say, damn, this guy is good. But it's 6 a.m. and I haven't had a smoke in over five years. Maybe a pack of reds would ignite my creative flame. But alas, this coffee I made yesterday and this microdose of LSD that I got a place that I got from a place in Europe that I can't tell you about will simply have to do. That's not hyperbole, but instead a story for another day. I used to hide from the pain that I had buried inside. Suffering was so normative that to be at peace almost felt like a misnomer in the narrative of my life. The idea of not having a screaming little voice pitching fireballs inside my cranium at full speed is, to be honest, something I have envisioned but not yet experienced. I don't know that the voice ever goes away, but we can soothe it by leveraging the mental health support that we are lucky enough to have access to. Sometimes a single call, text, email, meditation, yoga class, journal entry, a session with a coach, deep dive with a therapist, or walk in the sun can be the difference between one more day. The worst things we tell ourselves is that we are alone. There are 8 billion people on this floating rock. Chances are someone else is going through or has been through what is happening in your life. And keeping silent is at times to your own peril. And this isn't to shame you about not talking about your pain, but simply to have you think about what if. I think about the impact of my mother's suicide attempts and how whilst in the developmental state, I learned to cope with the fact that some people are crying for help and others attention and how that understanding shaped the conversation I had with myself about stepping into that white light by my own hand. I would be remiss not to note that fact. And This is not to be taken lightly, that her mother and her father tortured her mentally, emotionally, and physically, and their parents before them. Generational trauma begets generational trauma, 
and I am yet another statistic of those who have been hurt and those that have found support on their way to the other side. Look, it is an inconvenient truth that child abuse can make a person up to 5,200% more likely to kill themselves. I get it. Why? Because I tried to kill myself at 14 and again at 25. Scary words to write. But as I sit here comfy with my arm over the shoulder of that little voice, I simply listen and say, we going to be all right. I'll never say that it's easy to write about things like this because it's not. I don't know that it will ever be easy to talk about wanting to end your own life. Still, the truth is that I know that I am not the only one who has had these thoughts. And my hope is maybe this small, dare I say, an homage to one of the people I admired in the world the most may be a gateway for whoever is standing behind me to seek help. No one wants to talk about mental health at scale because then we have to heal and scare away the sponsors. There's nothing worse for the bottom line of big pharma than a people who are healed and doing the work. Now, let me be clear. Before another keyboard warrior attempts to cancel me, I see a great value in prescription medication. I myself have dabbled a time or two, but knowing the efficacy rate of most SSRIs is a measly 3 to 5%, depending on the study you read, it's hard to validate the 37 commercials I just watched while trying to indulge my desire to see people get a golden buzzer on my favorite guilty pleasure reality TV series. Are prescriptions a solution for suicide? Maybe, but most likely other measures can serve as greater. I think about the creepy crawlers that hide all around us, especially the ones in our heads, and how the difference between life and death for some of us is the person on the other side of that door or most often, the reflection in the mirror. It's impractical and irresponsible to say that I may never attempt suicide again. And I know that as a leader in this space, people will tell me it's impractical and irresponsible to even write that, but I don't care. I don't want to hide from the reality that it happened or that it pops up in my head from time to time. The truth will set you free, right? But more importantly, the truth will make you understand what is happening in your life because of your thoughts that you are having. I never anticipated my mental health journey would lead me to this moment. Still, I get swept up by the maelstrom of my seemingly desperate desire to create a massive impact on the world by having hard conversations. Suicide is a complicated conversation, and I applaud those like me that have non-figuratively looked down the barrel of a gun. And more so, I hold dear in my heart a space for those that didn't get to see the other side. I could create a laundry list of the top 10 things to do when you are thinking about killing yourself, but you have Google, and I don't know that a diatribe of that nature would suit anyone. The only thing that I do know is that battling the painful memories, emotions, and voices begins with acknowledging that you might need a little help and that you can't likely walk this journey alone. Going to try with a little help from my friends. I think that was one of those 1950s invaders with their awful boy bandness and catchy licks that sung that. There's no part of this journey that I can deem to be easy or straightforward. And to be fair, I don't know that it ought to be. When we walk up into therapy, call a crisis or suicide prevention hotline, or pick up the journal and bootleg luxury pen, we are doing the work. I understood something in the last few years that has been more impactful than anything else, and it's this. Why fight what's invisible when you can invite it over for a conversation? Having an open conversation about suicide is often the road less traveled, but every day we are paving the road, putting up street signs, and those annoying yet melodic life-saving rumble strips keep us from driving off the side of the road. Knowing that we are in a mental health renaissance for lack of a better phrase, is enthralling. But because maybe we don't have to keep this conversation to ourselves, we can create change. But unless we, as individuals, reach out for support, even though, or perhaps in spite of the fact that we feel alone, then we can build a framework for keeping our hands at 10 and 2 and moving forward in life, even if it's only one mile per hour. I want to say this, and, and I'll, I'll leave it here, cut this episode to the end. Sometimes literally the difference between life and death is reaching out for help. 
And if you're in a place in your life where you feel like the darkness is overtaking you, I invite you to reach out to me or reach out to someone to ask for help and support. I'm not saying that suicide is the right or wrong choice for you. I'm just saying have a conversation about it before you make a decision. Unbroken Nation, hope that you just got a tremendous amount of value from today's episode. I want to know what you think. Please do me a favor and review, rate, and share the episode with three friends on social media today. It would mean the world if you did, because ultimately at the end of the day, creating community and connection is how we heal generational trauma in the world. And I need your help to do that Unbroken Nation. So if you're on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you are, please like, comment, share, review. I want to know not only what you like about the show, but how I can make the show better, how I can make this further about helping you on your healing journey. So do me a favor. And when you do shoot me a screenshot of you making the review to my DM at Michael Unbroken on Instagram so that I can have a conversation with you, say hi, and more importantly, so I can share it with the Unbroken Nation. Thank you so much, my friend.